Hey, I'm Derek. And I'm Noah, and you're listening to A Bite Of. Where we take our current favorite pop culture obsession and enjoy it one nibble at a time. Very special nibble today. Yes. Spoiler free. New Doctor Who. Cuckoo, crazy, timey-wimey, trench coats, the good stuff. There is a trench coat in the church on Ruby Road. (laughs) He's got, yeah, it's leather. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So today, how we're going to do this episode, we don't usually do spoiler-free stuff, um, but this has not come out yet. And there is embargo stuff, and we just want to talk about it. Yeah, We just want to do a spoiler-free vibes. So do not worry, we will not spoil anything for the new Who. We will kind of talk about the specials, the 60th anniversary specials. So that does include the Christmas special with the 15th Doctor. So if you haven't seen that, that might get spoiled. And also Doctor Who as a whole might get spoiled. (laughs) So spoilers, but no spoilers. Yes. Wow. Spoilers for stuff that's already come out. No spoilers for things that have not come out. So this is very loosey-goosey. This is vibes only. This is what it is. Before we get into our vibes only spoiler-free review of Doctor Who, make sure you're following us. Make sure you're throwing some stars our way. Make us very happy. It will make our TARDIS fully go where it's supposed to go and not mess up. I can hear the, the noise. Yeah. The TARDIS noise. Ugh. It is a noise of my childhood. It is a noise that I always will love. I, I want to... It's like... You can hear it in your head, but you can't make that noise with your mouth. No. Right? Mm -mm, Try. (laughs) Too fast. (laughs) Kind of. (laughs) It's like the TARDIS is here. (laughs) Guys, the TARDIS landed. We're in it. Surprise. We've been traveling the whole time. (laughs) So make sure you're doing all the (laughs) all of that stuff. Also, if you have any thoughts on Doctor Who, want to share love, anything like that, also X-Men 97, we are covering that as well. So programming reminders, we still have the finale of X-Men 97 coming up. So if you have any thoughts on any of those things or what you're currently watching, email us, abonipples at gmail.com or just add us anywhere. But yeah, send us those. uh, We'll have some little mailbag stuff. Yeah, please please do. So I feel like Noah has given the spoiler alert already. Spoiler free for the spoiler. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Just, just. No, that's it. Just no. K-N-O-W. All right. So let us officially take a bite of Doctor Who episode one, Space Babies. Directed by Julie Ann Robinson and episode two, The Devil's Chord, directed by Ben Chessel, which are both written by the Russell T. Davies. So in episode one, the Doctor and Ruby have their first otherworldly adventure when they board a baby farm that has been abandoned by the adults. However, a monster lurks below deck. In episode two, the pair travel back to 1960s London, where they discover the magnificence of music has been stripped away by the menacing maestro. So that is, that sets the stage. That is nothing that you couldn't see on any of the synopsis. Yeah, if you go on IMDb right now, (laughs) it says that very thing. And the cast lists are there. (laughs) So So let's start this off a little because we are, we'll be talking about this new Doctor Who season as they come out, right? And so we've only seen these first two. But before we get into it, let's let these, you know, let's let our listeners or watchers, if you're watching this on YouTube, do you have any experience with Doctor Who? Like, do you know it just because it's a thing? Because I know you haven't really watched it. So right off the bat, I think this is interesting because you don't have much experience, but I've seen it. So I think it's going to be a fair review here. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that this is a really interesting thing that folks are diehard about right you love doctor who you are just in it for all that it offers and you know all the kind of emotional surprises that have happened in past seasons so i don't know those things (laughs) (laughs) and to be completely honest with you i didn't even know doctor who was a thing i would say until about seven or eight years ago (laughs) so i know this was out in the 60s 
right? That's when it began. And it just had its 60th anniversary. Yes. So <laughs> my little brain didn't even know it existed until, a, you know, less than a decade ago. Um, and so it's exciting, though, to be experiencing it newly because I'm with everybody else experiencing a new doctor, right? And so you all know the history of it, but I'm in it just as excited as you are to see this new person take the role. I've watched a couple of episodes before. I watched a couple of episodes of the Jodie Whittaker season. I watched a couple of the Christmas specials, but I've never really watched an entire season through and through. Which we will fix. With this one. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe on a uh, Patreon of some sort, we'll do like a Derek is finally watching Doctor Who. What does he think? Yeah, I, I actually it's exciting for me. One, that you're experiencing something that I personally love a lot. Doctor Who has always been like a constant. You know, it came out in 2005, really young then. But even growing up, Doctor Who was a th- kind of a thing in our household. And so it was like the, the 60s and the, the black and white versions were on. So it's always been a thing. So with its revival and then still continuing now with now it's on Disney. So it has that bigger budget, but I'm happy that it seems like because it's on a platform that's easily accessible, more people are going to be talking about it. So as a Doctor Who fan, I always want more people Mm. coming in there. Like, I don't, I think like gatekeeping Doctor Who is like really weird. It should be for everybody, which it is. So I'm so excited for people to experience this for the first time. Do you think that opening up to a wider audience invites more opinions, whether that's good or bad? I think. In this day and age, everybody has an opinion and it's fine. You know, you just got to like either you want to fight with it or just ignore it and find your group of people and be excited about it. Mm. And do you think that knowing the knowledge of all that has happened before enhances your enjoyment? So this is interesting, right? And I think this is going to go nicely in with this. So we had the the specials, the 60th anniversary special, and then we had the Christmas special, which was technically Shudy Got was first outing as the doctor um what i really liked about episode zero i guess you could call it Mm -hmm. and then episode one space babies is that they do a really good job of making it friendly for new viewers and i you can speak to this a little more but i think it's friendly for new viewers because since it's a new doctor new companion it's they kind of lay the groundwork right it's like who are you i'm the doctor this is the tardis this is how everything works and then They also do nods to people that have seen the stuff before, which is always nice to see. So I think it's it's enjoyable for everybody, right? I think if you are going to start watching Doctor Who, now is a perfect time to watch it because you have Russell T. Davies coming back, somebody that's very beloved with Doctor Who, and then it's a new Doctor. So it's a new adventure. It's a new story. You won't be lost. Yeah, I think in those first episodes, we as the viewer or the newer viewer are very much the companion. We are being told what everything is. We are that we are learning what the TARDIS is, right? He's explaining to us what it is. And we're like, Oh, great. Okay. I got it. You know, I don't know what it looked like before. And I think that's part of the magic of Dr. Who. Um, and even with all of the seasons, things that I, you know, if, if I continue watching Dr. Who into the future, one of the things I'll always look forward to, I know personally is what will the inside of the TARDIS look like? What will the sonic screwdriver look like? What will his like sort of accessory be Mm -hmm. for that season? And that stuff I love because I think that that is what really makes that particular doctor stand out and give them their own identity. So, you know, looking at those things, you're going, ah, that's who this person is. Yeah. I mean, you have like you have Eccleson's with the leather coat. You have tenants with the trench coat and the, the converse. You have the tweed look of Smith. You have. I mean, it's just, it goes on and on. But I feel that, like Jody's was the scarf, right? She had the... Well, she kind of had the blue mm-hmm. kind of trench coat, but, and then like the overalls almost and like the really colorful under, under part. Oh, yes. yes, um, yes. She did have a scarf at one point, um, but that is the magic of Doctor Who. It's like they get a new screwdriver, they get a new look, they get a new inside of the TARDIS. It's so much fun. Um, going into these episodes, what did you think? Like, what are your just general thoughts about these episodes? So my general thoughts about the episodes is that there's a lot of joy in them. I just felt happy watching them. And I think that's the thing with Doctor Who is that you have to, and and we talk about this a lot with other properties, give yourself over to it, right? Lean into it. It's sci-fi. It's fun. It's silly. It's also serious and heartwarming. Like lean into that goodness because then it'll take over how you're feeling. 
And that's how I really felt. When I watched, you know, episode zero, The Church on Ruby Road, I'm like, I'm in it, right? Because there's a musical number. There's a giant goblin king. There's just a mysterious old lady that's yelling at them about the TARDIS. You know what I mean? It's like, this is flood. Yeah. And so you're just kind of like, who are all these people? What is all this stuff? And you know that those things are going to be answered later on. And that's what's so exciting. So I think that in watching these first three now, that feeling carried throughout of just like effervescence and joy and wanting to be along for the ride with the doctor and Ruby. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. The one thing, so we actually got to attend a press conference with Shuti, Millie and Russell T Davies, and they got to talk a little bit about this. And one of the things from even journalists and reviewers, one thing that kept being brought up was there is so much joy in this. And that's really exciting. And I love to hear that while a lot of the doctors did bring joy in their own ways, there's something so special about seeing every single person in this, particularly Shooty and Millie, mm -hmm. the doctor and the companion, just so much fun. Like they're having fun. Yeah. It's not a job. They're just like getting to play. Yeah. And that is so much fun to see. And uh, specifically in the devil's court, I think space babies is fun. It's a very simple plot. It's like they go somewhere, there's babies. Why are the babies here by themselves? Oh, there's a mystery, right? I want to, I want to say that that episode is very much like alien, mm. but like fun. So the movie alien, just think about that. But with the doctor and the companion, there's so many beats that are like exactly the same. It's really funny. The second one is more complex and they add more to the lore and you get introduced to this foe and it gives you that other layer of doctor who first episode, super silly. Then you get into it and it's like, oh, my heart's going to get torn out at some point. Got it. Yeah. I I do want to just take a moment to talk about Shuti uh, Gatwa here. We have to talk about both of them. Absolutely. Yes. So we both fell in love with Shuti on sex education. Which everybody should have. Absolutely. How could you not fall in love yeah. with that character? And he's just so endearing and so lovely and so himself. And when they announced that he was going to be the 15th Doctor, that was just like, Mind blowing, right? I think during, whenever I saw that announcement, I ran to you and I was like, "He's he's the new doctor." And when you <laughs> said that, I was like, "Oh my god, yes, and yes!" In my head, secretly, I was like, "I can finally get Derek to watch Doctor Who with me." <laughs> they won me over. <laughs> they got me. I, I like. Look, I'm brand new to this. I'm sorry, but this is our most gorgeous Doctor. <laughs> oh no, I agree. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. Oh my gosh, that billion watt smile that he has. Oh my gosh, he's just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And just watching him play, it's just so much fun. It really is. And he's he's just eating it up. Mm -hmm. You can tell this is the role of a lifetime. And how could you not be so honored to play it? And I, I can already tell he's doing justice to being the doctor. That's it. I love that. You know, it's not often because a lot of times when the doctor becomes the doctor, the new person, there's something that has made them regenerate. Right. And in this particular instance that we saw in the giggle is when I was trying to think of the names of them, when David Tennant and Shuti are on screen together, but it's both the doctor, the by regeneration, which is, I mean, bonkers. You got to see that this doctor gets to have the life that he deserves. Right. And this doctor has a clean slate almost. There's a there's a line specifically in Space Babies when, you know, we get that very like you need this for a new doctor and their companion when they get on the ship and they're looking out at the expanse of space and wonder and all of this. It's very iconic and you really want those scenes for the new doctor and their companion. And he's talking to Ruby and he's like, I don't have a purpose. I don't have bills. I don't have any of this or direction now. He does, but at this moment, he's kind of free to do what he wants, right? Before the story and everything comes into play. Um, so it's really fun to see him kind of flex a little bit and mm. play around before he's having to like, I don't know, do these like really hard scenes and stuff like that. It's, it's fun to see. Yeah, it, it's really fun to see him as the doctor figuring things out, right? Because that's a part of this. They're kind of in each episode thrown into a situation where they don't necessarily really know what's going on. And he, he uses his doctor brain to, to figure it out, you know, and in the church on Ruby on Ruby road, the episode zero, 
he learns the language of knots, right? And so, like, it's just so silly, but you're kind of like, oh, yeah. And and Shuti has this moment where, where when he first figures it out, he pulls it, a latch opens, and then he crawls on all fours out of the latch. You know, it's just having so much fun. There's a few moments that are just so amazing in these episodes. That one in particular, where it's just like... Oh, I don't want to call it unhinged, but it's just like, oh my God, like th- these characters are doing this. And then there's one in, in this episode where they're like, oh, it's a monster. And it's like, monsters are just things you don't know yet. And it's like, you know, trying to comfort Ruby and then the monster makes a noise and then they both scream and run. <laughs> and it's so funny. One of the things that I really appreciate about this doctor is that, yes, they feel new and exciting and so much joy but they still feel like the doctor. And I think that's very important, especially for fans that have been watching this forever because they feel like one, they're clever, right? But they're also are the most like respected person in the room Mm. without having to, I don't know, be like, respect me. You know, it's just like, they always have that presence. And I think Shuti does that so well. And you see that a lot with Ruby's family, whenever they're in the apartment, like they listen to him and they're like, okay, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, you seem to know what you're talking about. And it's something that's key for a doctor to have. I think the doctor needs to have charisma, mm-hmm. right? They, like you said, need to win over everyone in the room so that they are trusted because they really do know what they're doing and they are there to, to do good for everyone. So you need to be able to trust that person. And I think that's what Shuti does and brings to this role. We get that, right? We want to be friends with him. We want to go on an adventure with him. And that's why Ruby chooses to do that with him. You know, she doesn't want to let him go. Right. Right. Well, yeah, I I do think. So let's get into Millie a little bit, right? Mm. To Ruby uh, Sunday, which is the name. Such a good name. Amazing. And her grandmother, Cherry Sunday. I mean, come on. Who is like kind of a scene stealer in episode zero. She's just like trying to get a cup of tea. There's (laughs) mayhem going on around her. Oh, she's so good. So. Millie Gibson, amazing. So the, the companion is just as important as the doctor. You can't only focus on the doctor, right? You have to have the companion. Yes. This is kind of a question I had for you of, and this is maybe a huge question, but what do you think the most important attribute the companion must have? Oh, that is very hard. Mm. <laughs> that is a hard question because I think it's dependent on the doctor. Mm. Right. So one of the, I think, most beloved ones is Rose and Ten and David Tennant. And that was a doctor and companion for that time. And then we got Donna and the doctor. We got Martha and the doctor and we got all of these and then Amy Pond and Matt Smith. And it's really dependent on what that doctor's story is trying to tell. Mm. I will say with this companion, I feel like the way that the, the doctor was introduced and then this companion was so different from what we've gotten before. Because a lot of times when the companion is introduced, the doctor gets saved by them. Or I think with Martha's uh, specific instance, she says something that helps them figure out the thing. And in this, they kind of just stumble upon each other. And we already had like two thirds of an episode with Shuti before we got to Ruby. So it was it was an interesting dynamic. I really like. Millie, I like Ruby. I think the mystery behind her is fascinating. I think that the relatability between the two, they both don't know where they come from or who their parents are. I think that draws them together. I'm going to be, I'm really interested to see more of that. I am sold, but I want to see like how it all plays out, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, So I think it's too early to tell like what I hope for this companion. But typically what I want in a companion is them working together really well. Sure. And I think they both do. Yeah. Both of them are so curious and so like, okay, we'll both jump mm-hmm. and do this. And I'm loving that. That's something that I think is a little different but with these two compared to other ones, at least of what I've seen. They both feel very young. They both feel very much like they're going to leap before they look. They're, they almost give the energy of... When you're younger and you go out on a night, on a, you know, with your friends and you get drunk and you just like meet that random person at the bar. <laughs> and for that night, you're like best friends with them. Right. right you know, you're right. drunk. You're having fun. Yeah. Let's dance. Let's go get this. Blah, blah, blah. And 
And it's just like this feeling of meeting a new person, having that energy between you, there's electricity and you're just going with it. Right. And like, that's what I feel between them. I think that the two of them have fantastic chemistry and you want to be their friend. You want to go out. I've always wanted to be the doctor's friend. Like, will I willingly jump in the TARDIS to go on terrifying, you know, probably will die adventures? Yes. (laughs) I... I believe I would go in the TARDIS, but I would be petrified the entire time. I feel like, so in Matt Smith's run um, with Amy Pond and Rory, I feel like you would kind of be like the Rory. I knew you were going to say that. Rory's amazing. <laughs> I'm just saying. But he kind of, he wasn't like a companion at first. And then he, he got like sucked into it. I feel like that would almost be you. Mm. That's, it's not. A, but I'd be good at it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be a great companion. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about feelings. You would. (laughs) Um, Yeah, it's really interesting. I think I'm intrigued by her mystery. Um, And I'm also intrigued by the doctor's mystery. Because as we knew from Jodie Whittaker's run, he's not technically a Time Lord. He was adopted by the Time Lord. So where is he from? Where is the doctor from? It's going to be interesting to see if those intertwine or if they don't. But still on that same journey. Yeah, I definitely think that there are a lot of really interesting themes going on with this with this new doctor and and companion. There is the theme of family, found family. There's babies. <laughs> Lots of babies. There's quite a few like baby stuff. Yes, yeah. and there's also music. Music. Yep. And so it's just so interesting to see these very strong themes really from episode 0 happening and now carrying out between these next two I'm so curious to see what we're going to uncover as the journey goes on. Yeah. Before we get into, you know, um, episode one, I feel like fun romp in space. First fun adventure. Well, look who's using the word romp (laughs) these days. It's a good word. (laughs) Um, It's fun. You know, there there is a little bit of mystery in it, which you will have to watch to find out. Um, Very silly. Second episode, before we get into that, I did just want to say how... You know, I've always loved Doctor Who. Doctor Who feels like it's that thing where everybody is important, everybody is involved, and we all should come together, right? The Doctor loves humanity, and it shows the best of it and sometimes the worst of it. It makes me so happy that there is a queer person as the Doctor. It's just amazing. Like I always felt kind of seen in the Doctor Who stuff, and now I feel more drawn to it, more connected to it. And, you know, Russell T. Davies, who is queer themselves, during the press conference, somebody had asked, you know, the doctor, you know, and LGBTQ, it's always like related. What do you make of that? And something that Russell T. Davies said that I really liked is I don't like LGBTQ people are people. They're just people. So if a story involves somebody like that, that's a story about that person. And so I really liked how he phrased that, that, you know, even though it's his world and it's who he is, he tells these stories from the person perspective, Mm. you know? Um, So I really appreciated that, but it's just, I just wanted to celebrate just that little win. Yes. I also do appreciate Shuti Gatwa spinning in a skirt in a club. I also want to appreciate Shuti Gatwa saying something along the lines of, I spent a very long, hot summer with Harry Houdini Basically, that's how he learned how to untie ropes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what they were doing, but I, you know, those things like that really do mean a lot yeah. to queer people like ourselves. It is that mirror. And it's so important for in the 60 years of the show to finally have an out queer person playing the doctor and having a doctor speak and express themselves yeah. in not a binary right. way right. of a man. Or a woman. It just is. Well, the doctor is fluid. Like, right. let's just put it like that. The, you know, Russell G. Davies has said that they don't want to put a sexuality on it. They're an alien. They're fluid. They can be anything. So let's just say that. <laughs> and we shall. Yeah. So Space Babies, fun, fun intro to I think the commentary of, you know, refugees and everything like that. Great. So let's move on to the second one. Yeah. Right. Well, I did. I, I do want to say, though, that. Because Space Babies is fun and a romp, it's a nice it's a nice buffer between the church on Ruby Road and then the Devil's Court, right? We have sort of serious building up of who these characters are, a little like, woo, this is their first adventure, watch them have fun, and then we get to right. the Devil's Court. Right. One thing that I was worried about with this new who, not worried, but I was hoping, was mm-hmm. that 
<laughs> new who, new who is they would keep the practical, right? Because that's something that we just always know. It's been on the BBC. It's been around for a while. So the practical just feels like Doctor Who. So I'm happy that in this, while you can tell that they have good C, like visual effects and everything budget, they still go for the practical when they can, mm. like having babies and remote control scooter or strollers. So in the Devil's Cord, while Shuti and Millie as the doctor and the companion are fantastic, Jinx Monsoon steals the entire episode, has one of the, if not the best intro as a foe for Doctor Who, and is building up to probably be my favorite villain of Doctor Who. I don't, I feel weird calling um, the maestro a villain because I'm not sure mm. yet with after this episode, but for right now, they're a foe. Yeah. But I am. I want more. Yes. <laughs> I, I love Jinx Monsoon. I've, I've been in love with Jinx Monsoon since RuPaul's Drag Race season five. Um, spoiler alert. They won. <laughs> they also won the all winner season. There are two time winner of RuPaul's Drag Race. The only one in the history of the entire franchise. It's I'm, this is going to sound ridiculous. I do not know her, but I am so proud mm -hmm. of her because of what she has accomplished and who she has become of just being a quirky theater kid from Seattle who is a drag queen on a show that won and just has now gone on to Broadway, is now on Doctor Who. And there's that beat when you love someone so much and they have a role like this, you're a little nervous almost to go like, oh gosh, is it going to be good? Are they going to do a good job? It's almost like you're kind of giving that thing to everybody yes, right and exactly big stage are, are, are people going to love them as much as i love them and you know and listen when you love someone i i think that you could sit back and go mm, maybe that wasn't so great Ooh, that made me feel a little, but you'll still love maybe. them you'll still love them i didn't i could not want more of, mm -hmm. of jinx as maestro in this it was like as it kept going and I kept seeing more. I was like, yes, yes, yes. You're doing it. You're amazing. You're incredible. And just blowing it out of the water. Yeah, it's fantastic. I, so there, I feel like the maestro has two intros in this episode. Most of our time we're in 1960s London during the Beatles. There is another surprise musical guest in this, which we will not say. But if you liked music from then, you'll know who it is. Um, but so they have two intros, right? And the first one I think is fun and interesting and mysterious, you know, and they, they talk to that music teacher and like, you have so many melodies and songs in you and it's just wasted on potential. You can never get them out. So get them out. The second intro is the intro specifically that I'm talking about an intro, meaning when they first meet the doctor with the mm. tuning fork and mm. using the sonic screwdriver the visuals, the sound, the no sound, the just like chewing of the scenery that Jinx does in this, the fit. We haven't talked about the fit. We'll get to that before we stop talking about Jinx, but it's just so good. It's ugh, what is like, I know we review stuff, right? It's like, it's delicious. It's yeah. like, it's just, you feel it. It's so good. Yes. And, and, and the thing about Jinx in this role in particular is that at the snap of a finger, Jinx is, is fun and then so scary and then singing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like it, and on a dime, she can turn and it's just mind boggling to be so enamored and laughing, but then frightened by right. a person in like, <laughs> the same second it's almost like i i tried to describe this when uh we were crafting our initial reaction in my first draft it was it was something along the lines of you know jinx monsoon's maestro is somebody that you would love to go to brunch with but then remember that they could probably kill you <laughs> right, <laughs> right it's like you have to remember like oh they'd probably like you know You'd be bad for well, you. Right. <laughs> I feel like that's part of the character almost is that they're just pulling you right. in until they can snap their jaws. Yeah. It's it's so much fun. I can't wait to see more of this character. Hopefully we get we I really hope so. We have to get more. Like Jinx as the Maestro is going to be a fan favorite. Mm. They are already a fan favorite. If you go onto Twitter, so many people are just like going bananas over it just with the initial images. I'm so happy that people get to see this. And like, here's the tea. Like, even if you have 
I mean, you should be watching Doctor Who, but just if you just love Jinx Monsoon, just watch that episode because you will just be living for what she's doing. It's riveting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really good. The initial, the episode itself, I think, sets up some really interesting concepts, bigger, broader things that have implications, things that have we've already seen that carry into this one. And I'm very excited to see where this goes because I almost feel like Russell T. Davies this time around is, what's the best way to describe this, is almost doing a more like magical approach to the doctor as opposed to like a very like science based mm -hmm. approach, um, more like fairy tale ish. Mm. Um, so like that myth and all of that stuff. Um, that's the feel that I get from this is specifically with the maestro and where it could possibly be going. Um, so I'm excited to see, you know, I feel like it's a different feel for Russell T Davies, but it still feels like him. He really excels in the long game. So I'm very excited. Well, even if you think about, Really, the introduction of Ruby Sunday as an infant, that's a very fairy tale beginning, right? It's, it's Left on the steps of a church. Yeah. It's, li yeah. I mean, we have so many stories where the person was abandoned, the orphan, you know, yes. this. Um, so it's very much like that. And that's the feeling I get, which I'm kind of excited for. And so, I, I mean, I guess it's kind of like, what, what is the overall story going to be here? That's the question. Is it really truly to find out? who's Ruby, who Ruby's parents are, or is it to find out what this journey is really all about or who the doctor really well, so that, is? That's the really fun thing about the companions, right? Is that we know their story will end at some point because mm -hmm. the companions don't, they're not forever, right? The unless doctor is, right? <laughs> unless you're Donna, oh, my love Donna, we'll never get to see them again. I'm so sad. No. Um, but we know that companion story is going to end at some point so i feel like for the time being it's going to be really heavy mm. on that or the mystery behind that um which i'm i'm excited for because i feel like a lot of times it's you know the doctor having to save the companion because of something that they did that affects the companion mm. um and in this time around it almost seems like the companion is affecting something that the doctor doesn't know so it leaves him in the dark a little bit so it seems interesting. Yeah, I, I think so. And just speaking about the mystery, I think that what Russell T. Davies is doing so well so far is just they're just he's just giving us breadcrumbs, right? We just get one or two little crumbs in each of these episodes and we gobble them up and we want to go find the other ones. <laughs> yeah. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing, you know, each episodic little adventure, but also seeing the little piece of the season's mystery. Yeah. The um, what do you think about the outfits, the costumes in this? Give me a break. They are, they've never been better. Like specifically with one, the maestro has different fits, all either looking like a band leader, but like decked out or just looking like music themselves. Um, but the doctor, oh my God. Like, I think, I think it was in the second episode, the devil's chord where they're like, oh, aren't we in the sixties? We need to change our look. And she's like, we need a wig. He's like, I got a room full of wigs. And it's like, <laughs> yes. It's so good. And, you know, I just think that, again, they're having fun here. And they, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what other places they go to, what other times they go to, because I think they're going to have a lot of fun dressing them up. Yeah. Well, then I think in the next one, Jonathan Groff is in it and they look like, to steal Ruby's words, oh, my Bridgerton. They look like they're in Bridgerton. So we're getting some nice fits in that one. Absolutely. I'm so excited to see the, the costumes because a lot of times it's like the doctor always looks the same, mm -hmm. which is like, I guess, fine. But now it's fun that they're actually dressing them up. Oh, 100. And even in what episode zero, I think that Shuti had like four or five different costume changes in those first 10 minutes. It was three Hats. different days. Oh, that big hat. <laughs> I should have worn my big hat. <laughs> You could have. You could have worn your big hat. <laughs> Dang. Next time. Um, but yeah, they're just, I think, really playing that up for this doctor. Things of note before we end this. Told you, it's very loosey-goosey. This is just the vibes. We like said stuff, but we didn't say stuff. Yeah, and take it how you want it. What do you think of that? So Murray Gold is back composing. Doctor Who fans rejoice. Um, love it. The there is at the end of every episode, like a next time, it kind of shows that, you know, what's going to be happening or what's going to be happening in the season. 
Um, so something that I know people have been like, is this going to still be a thing? It's still a thing. So <laughs> it's still a thing. It's still a thing. I did want to ask you um, before we go, just kind of nitpicking, right? The sonic screwdriver. I know you don't have much experience with the sonic screwdriver, but how do you feel it being more remote-ish? It's the least screwdriver screwdriver I've ever seen. I still think it does. It's fun. Like, I'm not good at sound effects. No, nope. that was a little better. It's closer, but not. I think that we got one. It. Okay. Uh, <laughs> just two minutes straight. <laughs> Let me just keep trying. Um, it looks more. So it looks more like a, there was a toy called a yak back in the mm-hmm. late 90s where like you'd speak into it and then it would do your voice and right. voice. That's what it reminds me of. Right. So I guess I don't have any negative feelings about it. Do I think it looks like a screwdriver? No. Well, I don't. Yeah. I mean, it's like always been a screwdriver, but not. I think, you know, Russell T. Davies had said something about like, you know, maybe oh, maybe he didn't. Somebody had said something like they didn't want it to kind of look like a gun in a way of like how they use it. So mm. they made it flatter and like a remote. It's going to be interesting to see what it can do this time, because I feel as time's gone on, it can do more things than initially even Russell T. Davies said it could do. So I'm excited for that. And I, I think we all just need to take a moment to remember that it is Mavity, yes. not Gravity, which was changed in the Giggle episode, right? And it's still going on. I love it. Through this. Give me more of those. <laughs> I love the jokes in these where it's like there should be a laugh track like happening when this when this like joke is said there's plenty of those but i'm i'm very happy with these episodes i'm excited to see where the tardis is going to go next do you think that the tardis will go back and change it back to gravity i don't think the, the tardis season the tardis doesn't care the tardis is like where do you want to go or the doctor i should say well i i don't think so like i hope they don't like forever in who it's just always going to be mavity why not sure do you want them to change it back? I just think that would be a fun little like bookend if at the end of the season mm. somehow they get back there and they see Isaac Newton again and they call it gravity. I want it to stay because the Dr. Donna is like the one that changed it. That's so it's going to always be Donna and 10 are still going to be in the who. <laughs> <laughs> They'll always be represented in the who. Yeah. All right. So. That's our vibes only, spoiler free. Yeah, so as you can tell, we were not vibing with it at all. (laughs) Totally hated it. (laughs) Do you have any critiques? I mean, yeah, this is a review. Well, the only critique I personally have is that I think that the maestro's wigs could have been bigger. (laughs) That is seriously it. Like, I always think of, like, when I watch RuPaul's Drag Race, they always say that, like, a bigger wig balances out the shoulders. and, Mm. And so just, it's a little tighter so i wish it was a little bigger um but that's really it i mean and that's me nick picking maybe they were initially going to do it but they couldn't because they had to have jinx crawl out of pianos sure so they were like yeah, the wig just can't fit oh, through that's true you know that's true. i mean i'm not saying i <laughs> wanted it to be like sideshow bob you know what i mean but i think it could have had a little more presence it did go this way yeah so. how about you do you have any critiques no, I'm, no. I love it. I think my only critique is, no, I don't, I think I kind of said some things that are a little funny to me, like how they met and everything, Mm. which is not really a critique. It's just different, right? Different isn't always bad. No, it's not. (laughs) Yeah. Everybody's special. Just like the doctor said to the baby, your uniqueness is what makes you so special. Those babies though, they were cute. Poppy. 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 He called, what did he call her? My popsicle? Oh, she was so beautiful. Okay, forget it. That's where we're leaving it. Uh, all right. So next time we can freely talk about Doctor Who. So see you next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye. That's not the TARDIS. That's not the TARDIS. I can't do it. <laughs>